we're at the third and final part. Um, there's not as many as I thought there was going to be shows to talk to you about, but there might be a lot of talking involved, so we'll see. Uh, we're going to start with Bugsy Malone, the first show I ever did when I was at school. Um, it just says, I'd love to find out the year, I think it's 2004, just says Year 6 production uh, ha- um, on the 7th of July at half six. Um, this was this was drawn by Charlotte Pegg, who was someone that we went to school with. Um, I didn't make... Oh, no, I did. I was going to say, somehow I didn't make the programme. There I am. There's a drawing of me as a child. <laughs> um, I think it looks like me. I don't really remember. Um, one thing that I found interesting, so I've not opened these since I put them in, especially this one. I don't remember the last time I looked at this. Um, I remember everyone. I remember all of these people. Emily Caldershaw, Danny Labram, the Killer Price Reed. Um... Yeah, I remember all of these, uh, but the bit I found really interesting, and I do remember this, but I just, you know, when something just completely takes you by surprise anyway. Oh, uh, first of all, I booked him alone was a girl, um, <laughs> which was interesting. Um, was it was it just one girl? Was it two girls? I think it was just the one girl. Um, yeah, it was it was it was an interesting twist, I suppose, on the on the, the normal story. Um, Alex, Alex Clear. You won't know him, um, I don't think, but we, we've been friends since primary school. Um, I haven't really been in contact for, for a while now, uh, but yeah, we were we were really close at one point. Um, we used to get on really well. We, we did a lot of shows. We did drama together, so we did a lot of group performances together, um, me and him. He he was a very good, he's a very good, I think he went to, he went to university for creative writing, but he wrote everything that we did, uh, and he was very, very good at that, um, even at that age. Um... Yeah, he did, he he brought out the one of the only serious performances I've ever done at school, um, serious serious acting performances out of me because um, I always stick to comedy because I can do more I can I can get away with comedy more I think, um, but doing that dramatic one made me realise I could do dramatic, uh, which is why both monologues you've now seen um, uh, are uh, serious serious ones for university. Um, so yeah, he's he really brought that out of me. Anyway, not the point. The point I was going to make was, that is the Jack Millman right there as part of Fat Sam's gang, him and Daniel Catton, <laughs> um, two of like my oldest friends, you obviously know Jack, uh, Dan Catton, I don't know if we've ever used the camera around him, um, yeah, um, both have got kids now, here I am, and they've both got kids now, um, the one, one thing I remember from that show, I really didn't want to do it, I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to play Fat Sam, uh, because I, I was... A pretty weighty kid. I'm still pretty weighty now, but I was pretty heavy as a child, and uh, I thought they were taking the mick. I thought they were taking the piss out of me as a kid in year six, and I was like, "What you're trying to say to me is you want me to be called Fat Sam, so the whole school can call me fat." Um, obviously, this wasn't the teacher's plan, but that's the only thing that was going through my head because I was really self-conscious about it. Um, they went, no, 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 that's not the plan. That's not why we want you. We, we just think you'd be really good at this. Um, and I was like, no, I don't want to do it. And they said, it's up to you. You don't have to do it. But um, this person will, will, will get you replaced if you can't do it. And I was like, no, I'll do what I want to do it. So I did it. Um, and it was really good. I really enjoyed the show. I really enjoyed being part of it. Um, and I remember drinking gin, which was a squash bottle. It was a bottle full of squash uh, that had been sat in a classroom for weeks, if not months. Um, like there was like a, our classrooms were all separated up it was a primary school so all separated up and like this was a dressing room for the boys this was a dressing room for the girls and then over here was like a, a, a sink area and that's where they were kept for some reason uh, and I remember sitting there pretending to drink this gin literally like this and offering it to the head teacher um, I've always liked breaking the fourth wall I've always known this um, since that show I suppose so I was sat drinking this instead of paying attention to um is it Blousey Brown sung? sung? Um, we're all drinking away and I'm like, hey, lads, do you want something? Do you want some of this gin? And I was like, miss, miss, do you want, do you want some gin? And she was like, no. Um, and laughed and everyone else was laughing about it. Um, people were coming up to my mum and me at the end of the show. Mum's told me this, actually. I don't really remember this much. Uh, apparently saying that um, I, was, I was a proper little actor. They could see me doing that in the future. Here we are, I suppose. Um... Which is interesting because the next show I did was like year 11. So it was end of one school. Uh, one from end of like primary school to the end of high school. 
Um, I didn't do anything between what I could have done, but I didn't. Um, apart from drama lessons, obviously. So yeah, um, that that's where the bug hit me, I suppose. Uh, the next one uh, I did was Guys and Dolls. Um, this is a this is a one dollar bill that for some reason we stuck back to front <laughs> to each other. Um, that I was told uh, we could not keep. And Miss Glue, I know you miss Delicate now. Delicate, Delicate, Delicate. Um, I know, I know that's your real name now. You probably won't see this, but I don't care. You told me not to keep it, and I definitely promise you I didn't. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, this one's got a bit of a story behind it as well, as you may have noticed. Um, but I'm going to show you this first. Uh, this this is the newspaper clipping that I was talking about before, um, and I am somewhere around there. Where where am I? Here. There I am, just there. That me, that me, though. And then they took a second one of me down here. There I am. Uh, I still have that suit. Um, pretty much everyone's costumes were you. You brought your own, but some stuff they provided for you. But I'm such a nightmare fitting wise. I always have to bring my own costumes for things. Um, this show was right around the time of my two operations. Um, I've had. I'm sure you may not know this. But um, I will let you know anyway. Uh, I have terrible knees. I've had two operations on my knees. One leg was longer than the other. Uh, my left knee. No, my right knee was longer than the left one. So my left knee kept dislocating. After the second dislocation, uh, they thought I chipped a bone. So they had a, like, like in-depth x-rays and they found this out. Um, so I had to have an operation. The first operation uh, came the year or so before that. And I uh, had to live in this living room because uh, I couldn't go upstairs. And I couldn't walk properly, basically, for a year, near enough. Um, yeah, I, I did a lot of my schoolwork at home, uh, whatever they sent me, whatever I could do, to keep up to date, but I just couldn't walk. The pins they put in my knees were really hindering my, my ability to move and my ability to walk. Um, so I, I, I got out of the bed, I, I can't remember how long it took me to get out of the bed, but I just remember not being able to walk properly for like a full year. Um, then this show came around like the year or so after um, and we knew the second operation was coming up the second operation was to take the pins out because um, the correction had finished um, we'd been to see a consultant we knew it was coming up I told the director this I was like this is the plan they went okay uh, just let us know hopefully it doesn't fall in between uh, doing the shows and it fell right uh, right about two weeks before the show maybe <laughs> so um they basically all shit themselves, and so did I. <laughs> I'd learned this role, they had someone else learning it, Connor, um, learning it. And then my role, uh, my role. Um, I was sat in a hospital bed, um, going over lines with myself. Um, I didn't tell my mum what I was doing in the show much. She knew I had a name, and that was it. Um, pins came out, I was going through bits of my, I had a script with me, I was going through bits of my head, but we were two weeks away from the show, I knew what I was doing for the most part, um, but it did mean I had to miss pretty much all of the dress rehearsals. So then the week before the show when I got um when I came back, I had to like cram everything into that last week, uh, which was fine. I did, I got it all in, finished it all, prepared myself for it, and it was phenomenal. Absolutely loved it. We've got a copy of the show on DVD. If I can find a way to put it on YouTube, maybe I will. Um but I doubt it. Uh it's that that show is really what brought me to, to wanting to do theatre. Um it made me realise my love for it. I really struggled with the singing side of it. Um, you may be shocked to know my singing voice has improved. Uh, when I was a kid, it was so bad. I wasn't good in that show at all, singing-wise. Um, couldn't really sing properly. Um, <coughs> so my my solo song, I got a solo song in it. Um, Sit down, you rock the boat. I played Nice and Nice to Johnson. I don't know if I mentioned that. In that one, I played Fat Sam. This one, Nice and Nice to Johnson. Um, yeah. And, um, Nice Nice Johnson, that's what I was saying. And that's what my mum knew, that was the name role I had. And he's got a song in it called Sit Down You're Rocking the Boat. I couldn't sing it, so I gospel choired it. Um, and someone hit like the high note for me, there was like a big long, not a high note, it's a long note. Someone did the long note for me, um, in that song. But instead of like singing the song, I spoke sang it at the audience, um, and got them involved in it. The... Uh, orchestra followed me for that then so instead of me having to go like that's my note, that's my beat right now I've got to join in there 
uh, I sang and they sort of followed from there, which was terrible to give me that power because um, I took advantage of it way too much. Um, but there's like uh, the, the recording they did actually was the best version of that song that I did. The other nights I was a bit awkward and a bit iffy. Um, still good, just wasn't to the potential it could have been. And then that night, for some reason, I don't know if they told me they were filming it, but for some reason I was like, just gonna go for it, and I did, and it was amazing. It was such a good feeling. Like the the, the cameraman uh, at the back of the auditorium just starts filming the cast. Like all of us just sat there because the the audience are clapping for like a good minute and a half, maybe two minutes, and we're all just like, there's still a scene. We're in the middle of a scene, um, and I sit down, and um, as everyone claps, <clears throat> I'm sort of sat there like in character, like yeah, just just that's that's how this always goes. Looking around at everyone, going, what the fuck? Where did that come from? And me going, oh, I got a fucking clue. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> what happened? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just absolutely loved that. It was such such a good experience for me. Um, my, uh, the first night I came home, Mum was in floods of tears. I had to get a lift home from the director, which was my uh, English you know, my drama teacher slash head of English um, at the school, because there was just no other way. Uh, a couple of the cast members gave me lifts as well, but that night she gave me a lift home. Um, and my mum was on the doorstep and she, uh, she was like, she's crying, so I wonder what's happened. Uh, my mum comes right over to the car and slaps me uh, on my arm and goes, you didn't tell me you were singing in that show. And she just hugged me, um, proper, proper squeezed me. Because um, I hadn't told her anything, I hadn't told her that I was singing in it, <clears throat> I hadn't told her I, was, uh, I had a lot of lines, I didn't tell her what I was doing in the show, she just knew I was in it. I keep Whenever I'm doing a show I keep everything to myself when I can. Um, yeah, uh, so she had no idea, and the, the show opens with me singing, so it just completely took her away from it, she couldn't believe it, she came to see it every single night, and I had family members, uh, my nan came every night, she came every night, and I had family members like uh, my Uncle Keith and my Auntie Kay that I went to see in Wales, I don't know if my Auntie Kay came down, before they, before they lived in Wales, they lived in Birmingham, he came to see it, and I, was, I remember being very shocked that he came to see it, because um, it's not his thing at all. Um, it was so much of a big deal. My mum came backstage uh, to find Miss Glue, um, Miss Delica, uh, to tell me that my my uncle Keith was there. I remember being like, what the hell? <laughs> um, yeah, that was such a good show. There was a lot of my improv in that as well, um, with breadsticks, uh, eat a sandwich on stage and offer it to the audience. Walked across the stage and I was like, do you want, do you want some of my sandwich? And everyone's like, no. All right, no, well, fine. Uh, but I didn't tell anyone about that, so that you can, like, it's not in the clip. Um, but the first night I did it, which was, I think, opening night, um, I just told the person that I was going to stop in front of them, I'm going to stop in front of you, don't react, um, I know what I'm doing. Uh, if anyone gets in trouble for it, it's me, because it's my choice to do it, so don't panic. And um, the director came backstage after, after the scene and was like, um, don't improvise anything ever again but keep that because you got a laugh. And I was like, yes! <laughs> and like, even, the, even the, the people I was on stage with were like, <clears throat> and I was like, sorry, I'm sorry, I should have warned you all. <laughs> I didn't think about it. Um, and it was a bit later on. So in Act 2, I get some funny lines in. I, do, I did that, I did some other bits um, that got some laughs. It's the first show I'd ever done from, since, since Bugsy Milan. I wasn't sure if I was good enough. I always think, like, I'm always a little bit worried. Uh, and I was like, I hope I'm doing this well enough. I hope people are liking me in this show. Um, and then Act 2 starts. And when my character walked on stage for Act 2, um, for the first show, there was like a murmur. There was like a giggle around the audience. And I just stopped and like glanced just slightly to my left, not looking at the audience, just glanced slightly to my left and like acknowledged that to be like, holy shit, I did it. <laughs> That's all I wanted, was people to be like, oh, here he comes. And people were like, oh, here he comes. It was such a good moment for me. That's, Books of Malone was like the start of me being like, oh, I want to do this. Guys and Dolls was like, I can do this and will do this. Um, I did a scene with a breadstick that made the person I was opposite, every time he, t he took, the, he'd take the breadstick off me and put it down, because apparently I wasn't paying attention to him. Um, throughout the whole scene, it looks like I just didn't give a damn what he was saying, I was just eating this breadstick, so he took it off me in the scene, put it back in, his, in like the little basket we had for him, and <laughs> without without thinking about it, without um, talking to him about it, he took it off me, and I just looked at where he'd put it, picked it up, looked at him, and took a bite out of it, and looked him in the eye, 
the first night I did that, um, he broke character on stage and actually laughed um, at me. I was like, <sighs> nicely, and just carried on. Um, and every night after, he was like, that was so funny, I couldn't even hold it in. Um, then he made me do that every single night, and every single night he'd, he'd like bite his lip, and he'd be like, I can't, I can't not do it. Um, yeah, it was great. It was subtle, it was funny. Audience laughed, he laughed. I loved it. Um, but with my issue with my knees, uh, I spent 90% of the show on stage. Like, in scenes, there was, like, a scene with two, two people, like, having an argument, a couple having an argument, and I'd just be stood in the back reading a newspaper because I couldn't walk off stage quickly enough with my knees. So I'd have to stay on stage for a long time until the curtain came down. <laughs> and, like, every night again, be like, I can't believe you're talking about that. <laughs> I just... I thought it was hilarious. Um, but, yeah, that, I, I got back on my feet within two weeks for that show. Um, I used one walking stick. You can see in that photo there's like just a cane and that just became a prop. Adrenaline must have kicked in or something. I couldn't believe it. So for the song, I'm just swinging the cane around and things. Couldn't believe it. It was amazing. I loved that show. Such good memories. I did Grease with that school as well, um, which is where the song photos came from. But I mentioned that, so I've, I've left that out of this because this video, I can already tell, is going to go on forever and a day. Um... <coughs> These two, three shows, um, Autographs uh, is where it started with Greece, obviously, uh, but then I took it to stage experience with me. Annie was my biggest role, then Footloose and Greece, uh, because of my height mainly, but uh, my age as well, but apparently I've got a young looking face, apparently. Uh, but my height makes me look taller than the kids, so I can't be a child role, obviously. It would look stupid with me being at a school with people a lot smaller than me, a lot younger than me. <clears throat> Um, so in Annie I played Drake, um, which involved like eight lines, uh, all being yes sir, apart from one scene where I said sir, sir. Um, I made such good friends here, I, I uh, met my, girl, my then girlfriend here. Um, but the one thing I wanted to mention about the, this, um, the Funniest Moment Award that I mentioned earlier on, I got for just being me. Um, like, the, there'd be moments, uh, the director's daughter was part of the show and someone was flirting with her and she shouted at them and, and said, like, um, could you leave my daughter alone for a minute while we do the show, while we do the rehearsals? And everyone laughed about that. There were, like, little individual moments that made everyone laugh during, laughed during the rehearsals of that. Um, and then, so, they were all listed and then it was just me. And I, me and the director for that line uh, won it. Um, yeah, crazy to think that. I seem to have that connection with people when I when I get a named role, but in general, I always try and make sure the cast feel like a family. And this this group when we did this show really felt like a family. Um, this is where I met Todd. Me me and Todd did Annie together. He drove a car like this on a straight road. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I think he was thirteen at the time we worked out. It's his birthday today while I'm filming this. So happy birthday, Todd. Um, but yeah, absolutely brilliant. If I can find a photo of him in this, then I'm going to show you that because we are super young. Um, and I'm super hefty. <laughs> um, there's Richard, who played the main role, so I've got to be around here somewhere. But there's little Todd. There he is. There he is, sports fans. Little Todd there. Um, as you can tell, I haven't actually looked at this yet. I should, probably should have done. Um, here's the page that I'm thinking of, I believe. Where the hell am I? Did I not? I've got to be in this one because I'm thinking. Basically, they got us to write our own um, our own write ups in this. So you know when you you might not know, but when you go see a show, um, there's like a, a list of things that the the person's done in the past. There's like um, accomplishments, where they're at, what they're doing, how old they are, and things. Uh, there's me. There I am. Um, yeah. So if you had a named role, they gave you like a. A bit of a write up, so like uh, the the guy above me, Nick, who I got along really well with, was like, Nick is 17 years old and he's doing his first show with Stage Experience and is in a few minor roles. Uh, he attends Pauline Quirk Academy and stuff like that. That's that's what they wanted from you. Um, this is the main reason I wanted to do this little clip, this little bit, was for my entries. I loved writing these entries and I always tried to make a joke out of them. So I put, <laughs> I put for this, this is my first year. Six foot two, 20 years old and great looking, right? I know. 
I started acting in school uh, shows from the age of 16 in Guys and Dolls, which sparked my love of acting. After that, I was in Greece in sixth form and a music video wearing a full body rubber suit painted brown for a Mudman character. Enjoy that image. Uh, when I'm not performing, I work at Tamworth Castle and make videos on YouTube. <laughs> also, within the next two years, I'm hoping to go to university, it's now been seven, for drama or acting. Uh, but for now, thanks to my, to my family and friends for their support and love. Very nice indeed. Um, that was the tamest of, of all of the shows that I've done. Um, we, I got in trouble for the signed photos in that show. We threw one out of a window and the director thought I was throwing naked photos of myself outside a window as if that was happening. Um, so then when we won the award together, I gave her a, a version of that signed photo, which she loved. Um... But yeah, that was that was such a good show. I really enjoyed that show. Uh, then I did Footloose. Um, again, a good show. We made some really good friends from this that I still know now. I taught uh, one of the lads in this how to swivel his hips because he just couldn't get it. He couldn't get it. Um, so I had to teach him how to do the how to do the swivel of the hips. Um, here I am. Uh, we we. We were told to bring our costumes in for this photo, so I just wore mine. I think we we had to wear them in the end, but I wore mine, and you may notice it's the same suit <laughs> that I wore for Guys and Dolls, because when I went there as well, they were like, we can't fit anything for you, and I was like, it's fine, I got you covered, um, and I wore the worst thing I could find, which was that, um, this is where we met Mark Walsh, uh, we stopped in hotels for this as well, there was like one night during the show where we'd all just go stop in a hotel, we'd play Cards Against Humanity, different games, just get to know each other and have a drink, uh, which was a lot of fun, we really enjoyed doing that. Um, Todd was in this show again. I believe that is a different photo, and I think I have lost weight in between so in between shows, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So we'll get into this one now. I haven't read these in years. Um, I know I'm surprised they let me back too. <laughs> Though this year I won't be doing much dancing due to my foot being loose. Bang! Funny guy, this guy. <laughs> Maybe I need a hero. Was my next line. I can't believe they printed this. So that line now is, uh, I won't be doing much dancing due to my foot being loose, maybe I need a hero. I turned 21 this year and couldn't wait to come back and do the show. I hope you enjoy this as much as we have. I hope you enjoy this as much as we have putting it together. To, to quote the man himself, so long earth, catch you on the flip side. Full stop, autographs available, full stop. I remember putting the, full, the uh, autographs available thing in there, but I don't remember what that quote is. What is that quote? I'm going to have to look this up. Otherwise, it's going to baffle me. I might just put something in the end of the video. So long... No, I'm going to do it now. So long, Earth. Catch. There it is. I've searched this recently. Why have I searched this recently? What is this from? Apollo 13. Apollo 13. I'm sure there was a reason for that quote to be in there. I don't remember what it was. But yeah. Um... In this, I played a kitchen. Did I? Did that actually end up in the in the program? I ended up playing a kitchen for part of this show, um, because I, I I helped them. No, they didn't put characters in this one. Um, and uh, me me and Richard, who played Warbucks, played a kitchen together. Uh, we had to fold the sides in and then move it off stage gently during a song so no one saw it. Uh, going off stage and he took a, the door off instead of just walked off with it in the middle of a show because he couldn't get it to close because he hadn't lifted one of the hooks or something hilarious um we didn't have much to do in this show i didn't have much to do in this show so i purposely learned how to play bridge because in one of the scenes the characters all sit around the table and play bridge we learned how to play bridge we got really good at it and really competitive at it love bridge i can't remember how to play it now but it was so much fun at the time and then the last show I've done is Greece, um, which was 2016. So I haven't done anything since 2016. Um, it's been two and a, two and a half years nearly. Um, but this show, I, I, like I said, I missed one of the shows and I was really upset about it. So I did this one. I really wanted to play Vince Fontaine again. I didn't get it. Um, but it didn't matter. It was still a load of fun. I enjoyed myself. Um... This is where me and Millie met, actually. We did the audition together. She didn't get in. Um, or if she did, she didn't get in. Uh, d didn't... She got No, she got into something else. She was doing a different show. She, I remember this now. She did a different show in the end. Um, <clears throat> so she didn't get into this, but we met at the auditions. Um, and that's how we got talking. And that's why we are friends now, is from these auditions. So you never know who you're going to meet at auditions. Um, 
There I am. There he is. There he is. Sports fans. I don't know why I keep saying sports fans. And there's Todd. Todd was in the. It was in Footloose as well, but I didn't look for his photo. And that it just so happens that that photo is the one I opened it on. Um, met some really great people here. Everyone that does these shows are so talented. Um, it's it's crazy. Uh, am I on this bit this time? No, am I just in the full company bit? Um, oh, this one's got character names on it. Please tell me I got something in this one. There it is. So I was just just teacher, um, and then I played a scientist in the movie. Um, there's a line in it that referenced Old Man Drucker, so we got it in there. We decided I was Old Man Drucker. Um, yeah, you could tell that I really didn't, I really wasn't bothered anymore um, by this because I just wrote, uh, "Tom is happy to be back uh, for another venture with the new Alexandra Theatre after portraying Drake in Annie." in 2013, and Principal Clark in Footloose 2014. Uh, he has returned for his third stage experience production, being cast as Old Man Drucker, the economics teacher. He hopes you enjoyed the production. Yeah, I just, I wasn't fussed anymore um, by writing something interesting or funny. Um, but they talk about Old Man Drucker in the show being a pervert, and then I put that in there, hoping someone would put two and two together. That was my little joke in that one. Uh, but nothing would have topped Footloose where I put all the scraps available. So... I just gave off, I think. Um, yeah, um, that's the last time I did anything really performance-wise on stage um, until this year. I'm currently doing rehearsals for uh, Half Sixpence. You'll hear more about that when it comes around. Um, so yeah, if you want to come see me in something, it's going to be at the Alex Theatre as well. I'll let you know details about that. I apologise for the, how long this video has been, um, but I just wanted to talk about the shows and my experiences and how much I loved doing these shows. Um, Annie by far is my favourite one I've done for um, for stage experience but I loved all the shows that I've done for this for this group um, Guys and Dolls is by far and away my favourite thing I've ever done um, and here's to the future I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next one